Ghana for or fail so at the Ghana High Commission. Uh, now we would go straight to the phone and speak to uh, Mr. Doji. Um, Doji, you have to forgive me for the surname. You would have to mention that by yourself. But good morning to you. <laughs> good morning, Daniel. How are you today? I'm very good. Doji, please help me with the surname. <laughs> it's okay. No matter what. That's fine. No matter okay, so. Great. Mr. Doji Numekevo, um, Head of Public Affairs and Information at the Ghana High Commission. Good morning, sir, for taking time out to speak to us this, this morning. Yesterday, you were uh, in Ashford um, yes. to receive uh, the, the crew, the members from Wonderlust Ghana. Now, let me begin by um, asking, um, when, when did the, it really come to the attention of the High Commission that this um, journey was being embarked upon? Oh, well, so as, as the head of information at the, at the High Commission, I, I got rid of it the very day they set off from Accra. And then as they go through um, the various countries, through Mali, through Morocco, uh, we kept getting alerts from the embassies in uh, Niger and Morocco that we are with them, they've landed in Morocco, they will be passing on to Spain. So we're getting, we're following their, their yeah, the developments as, as they moved closer to London. Mm, okay, so, uh, okay, that meant that, you know, you were in touch with the various missions in the different countries they were journeying to. That, that, does that include the ones in, in Europe? Um, yes, to some extent. I mean, at some point, we lost track. Um, we lost track of, of what the, the mission was doing. Because you see, don't forget that um, most of these missions do not have information of it. So at some point, we, we lost track of where they were. But we're following events on social media, on, on WhatsApp, on Instagram, and then uh, on, on um, Facebook. So let me find out, Doji, um, this, this trip that um, has been embarked on by Wanderlust Ghana, what does it really mean for um, the Ghanaian diasporan? Um, well, I would even add that for Ghanaians as a whole, it only tells us that as Ghanaians, whatever we set out to do and we commit ourselves to it and we are resolute, we can achieve them. In fact, when the people set off, when uh, Kojo Saka and the rest set off from Accra about two, two, three weeks ago, nobody thought that they could accomplish this task. But here we are, yesterday you were there, we welcomed them to London. It only tells that, that, look, there is some, some spirit of resilience. There's some resolute spirit that we have as Ghanaians. That if we set out to do something and we put our minds, our heart, our body, and our soul to it, we can achieve it. And that is the message that these um, people actually send out to all of us Ghanaians, both in the diaspora, both in Ghana and across the world. Mm. Don't you, somebody will ask why? Because um, our brothers and sisters from Asia, from the Americas, from UK, Europe, they embark on some of these um, adventures all the time. So the question is, why is it that, uh, or why was it that at the very initial stages, there was so much um, uh, skeptical sentiment about this journey? Why did we think that they couldn't actually complete the journey? Uh, I don't know. Let me get your thoughts on it. Well, <laughs> probably it, it comes back to the usual uh, pessimism that we attach to, to probably everything. That, oh, no, Jan, won't see me yet. You know, that kind of thing. You shrug it off. You, you brush it aside. But it's, it's, it's kind of typical with a lot of us, um, and probably in Africa and in, and in Ghana. Um, but, and then also, you see, yesterday, um, the, the, the travelers, Wanderlust, the eight people, the 12 people who embarked and made this trip, said something that um, when they started, they had a slogan that, look, the journey is the destination. But uh, you all know that this involves a lot. I mean, the cars, fuel, and everything. And we didn't know them. Not, not too many people knew them in Ghana anyway. Like, we didn't know who Kojo Saka was. We didn't know. I mean, we didn't know any of them. So we're like, okay, why are they going to get the money to, to, to embark on this trip? So a lot of people were a bit, a bit uh, skeptical and a bit pessimistic about it. But here we are. We are here in London.
Mm. Um, in in terms of um, you know, now they are they are here. The the news is all over. We have um, international media houses trying to shine that spotlight. Now let's look at the implication for um, Ghana's tourism. Um, you know, Ghana's um, drive for um, export, drive for um, attraction, and and all those things. Brand Ghana. What is the implication uh, for for all of these? Uh, yeah, Daniel. So I mean, as you really indicated, um, BBC carried the news. They spoke live to the people. I think when they were in Spain or France, I, I can't remember. <laughs> but BBC carried. They did. They did a, a story on it live. Okay. And as I made, I made a point yesterday that these people have succeeded in placing Ghana's name once again on the world map. In the past, it used to be football or athletics. But today, it's adventure that Ghana is going to be noted for. So a lot more people through the mainstream media and social media that have been following them are now going to hear about Ghana. So, I mean, as part of Ghana's drive, year of return, beyond the return, tourism and everything, a lot more people are going to learn more about Ghana and they would want to travel to Ghana either to go and see these cars because probably, I mean, these people might decide to put these cars up as exhibition so that people would travel from across the world to come and have a look. So who knows? People will start traveling to Ghana just to go and meet these people in person and, and get to see them. So it's going to add a lot to our tourism drive. Again, it has put Ghana's name on the, uh, on the world tourism map because it's never happened before. No Ghanaian has, has done this thing before, driving by road from Ghana, from Accra, all the way into the heart of the United Kingdom. So people are going to be start asking, like, where is Ghana? Where are these people from? We need to go and see the country Ghana and, and know the people that they are, you know. So, yeah, it's, it's going to add a lot to our brand as a country to our tourism drive, to our marketing drive as a people. Mm. One of the, or some of the sentiments that's being expressed on social media mainly is that it looks like um, <clears throat> from the initial stages, the Ministry of Tourism and some of the indigenous Ghanaian businesses sort of missed an opportunity to be part of such a, a remarkable feat that could have propelled held us in a much more or could have propelled even the country the brands that are indigenous in a much more um stronger light. i i don't know if you share the same sentiments and the question is that why is it that you know indigenous companies like maybe the cantankers and and then you know even the ministry of tourism itself didn't collaborate with this team to own it right from the beginning do you do you, do you know well, I mean, I, I'm not sure about the kind of uh, collaboration or communication that had um, gone on between the crew, the Wanderlust crew and the Ministry of Tourism. So I'm unable to speak to that. But I mean, let's not look, let's not look back. We, we are where we are. We just need to make as much noise as we can about it. Okay. You see, when you start doing something and it happens all the time, nobody believes in you until it's done. Now it is done. It's up to the Ministry of Tourism. The Ghana Tourism Authority, the Ghana High Commission, and all interested parties, motor companies. Look, it's not only the Ghana Tourism Authority. I heard from the grapevine that even uh, they approached the motor companies, Toyota, you know, some of them drove V8, Lexus, and all the rest. Now, look, we are going to travel across the desert to, the, to London from Accra. Do you want to be part of it? And some of them say, you know what, we don't want to be part of it. That is the motor companies. Okay, private entities that could have used this as a marketing tool, as a, as a vessel to market their brands. They never, they never believed it. But I, I know for a fact that when they get back to Accra, those motor companies are going to come up to them and say, that, look, you know what, do you want us to associate ourselves with, with your brand or to your name or to what you have done or to your achievement? So, so that, that's, that's, that's what human nature is all about. You know, they say success has many fathers, but defeat is an orphan. I like the I like the point that you made that we are here now. Let's let's look forward. I know that um, yesterday you were there um, with with a crew from the High Commission. There are some um, events that have been planned, um, some engagements that have been outlined for for them. Um, still engaging with the Ghanaian community. Can you talk us through some of them? 
Okay, so um, as you, you, you are aware, um, the Ghana High Commission collaborates with um, Aquaba UK to organize the Ghana Party in the park. Okay, so it's, it's part of, it's, it's the biggest gathering of Ghanaians in, in the UK, I, I mean, outside Ghana. Um, the Wanderlust crew are going to be at the Ghana Party in the park to speak to people. Don't forget that they embarked on this trip together with Edu Sports, another charity, to raise funds for um, villages or communities in Ghana that do not have access to IT facilities, i.e. laptops and computers. So they'll be at the Ghana Party in the park to raise awareness about uh, this venture and, and these uh, charitable causes that they are, they are involved in. So party in the park on the 12th of uh, August, 2023 at Cock Foster's Strength Park. So they'll be there. And we're inviting all the Ghanaians to come there and see their heroes, to see their compatriots who have embarked on this enviable feat. On Tuesday, that's tomorrow at 2.30 p.m., they will be paying a courtesy call on the Ghana High Commissioner to the UK, uh, His Excellency Papa Oswankoma. And then we'll do a press briefing, a soiree, to highlight the courses they are, they are engaging and to tell the whole world about what they have done. Um, so for now, as and when um, any events come up, we would let um, Ghanaians in the UK and around the world know. But for now, these are the two events. Tomorrow, 2.30, get see call on the Ghana High Commissioner to the UK, Papa Oswankoma. And then on Saturday, they'll be at the Ghana party in the park. Mm. Is tomorrow's um, e e you know, event um, open to the public? It's not, because we haven't got the space to, to, to actually um, engage everyone. It's, it's just a small conference room. But then I know for a fact that, I mean, there is um, there, there, there are sports around the place. Ghanaians might just well, because they are coming with their cars, the cars that they drove in from Accra to the UK. So people would want to come and catch a glimpse of, of the, the people who did this feat and then uh, the cars that they drove in. Um, so after the meeting with the High Commissioner and the, the press conference and the press briefing, they would come out and then Ghanaians would, would um, have the opportunity to meet them. Doji, thank you so much for your time this morning. It's you're, been you're it, it's Anytime, been awesome. Daniel, it's been awesome Daniel, talking yes. to you. Else that we need to, to throw light on. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So you enjoy the rest of the day, and definitely we'll, we'll catch up and we'll see you tomorrow at the High Commission. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you so much. I was here for um many. Mini Ura Doji Numekevo, Head of Public Affairs and Information, the Ghana High Commission in UK. And I'm in a train, Komono, just eight minutes to go right here on Rainbow Radio 92.4 FM. I think